2020 in the rearview mirror. 41 events, 456 fights. 2020 has been like nothing else. The UFC is gearing up for another chapter in its storied lineage. We are in for more UFC history. And there is no better way to kick off 2021 than to welcome back its most iconic superstar, the notorious Conor McGregor. Well, few things in all professional sports as dramatic, as intense, as special as a Conor McGregor mixed martial arts fight. Woo! All in like soldiers, we don't play, yeah, we're ready for war. The first simultaneous title holder in UFC history, with records in gate, attendance, and pay-per-view buy rate. It's not just his cult of personality, it's what he's able to do. All backed by knockouts across three weight divisions. At featherweight, lightweight, and now at welterweight, it's my name in history one more time. We'll now headline UFC 257 for a rematch, six years in the making. That's a chaos fight. Fury inside us, fired up, got our eye on the prize. This is going to be a dog fight with two hungry pit bulls. Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor's featherweight bout in 2014. I mean, that was just glorious. That's the real deal, ladies and gentlemen. They have each amassed legendary lightweight runs. Dustin Poirier rises again! I've been knocked down and I've climbed back over and over again. Two division champion Conor McGregor. I ridiculed everyone on the roster. They're not on my level. And are set to do battle once again on January 23rd. This is a different fight. The striking of Poye has just gotten so much better. Six years is a long time, and I plan on executing. Oh my God! Poye continues to land! Does it? Dustin Poye! Wow! I like Dustin. I did back then. I do now. I think he's a good fighter. He's even a great fighter, you know, but great is still levels below me. That's crazy. Connor That's it. Wow. Too easy. The co-main event will feature the newly signed Michael Chandler, a multiple-time champion from outside the UFC. His first test comes against top 10 knockout artist Dan Hooker. Do or die. We'll be the oh, oh, Dan Hooker! No count! Every time he steps back in the octagon, you get a better version of Dan Hooker. The hangman does it again! Special fighters beat special opponents. Welcome to the big show. But before the UFC kicks off the new year in style, first, get ready. Sham, sham, Delia. Home sweet home is right. For UFC 257. Welcome back, Conor McGregor. Countdown. Victorious. Although Conor McGregor is known today as the combat sports icon with mainstream appeal, many forget that Notorious was once a hungry young prospect from Ireland. A lot of people have been talking about Conor McGregor for a long time, and we're going to find out if he's the real deal. Who needed to prove himself, just like the rest. The man holds belts in two different weight classes in the Cage Warriors promotion, the largest promotion in the UK and Ireland. The company is obviously the premier company in the fight industry. UFC is a completely different level and Connor says he's ready for it. There's a whole nation watching this young man. But I always had high aspirations. I was always confident coming in. Mark is his heart looking to finish it here. This is why everyone's been talking about Connor it's McGregor. It's all over. Ultra impressive UFC debut. This kid's the real deal. Dana, 60 G's, baby! <laughs> but even then, the UFC saw great promise. <laughs> What's Welcome up, to man? UFC, man. Yeah, thank you very much. This is only the beginning for me. I'm not stopping. I'm going to take over. And rolled out the red carpet for their potential superstar in the making. In the UFC, you know, they saw a little something, but I saw more. The UFC put on this contest for the fans to do a Conor McGregor poster. And we have the winner right here. Conor has his own media day, a poster up here. I mean, is there any part of you that's kind of starting to get a little annoyed with this and feel like maybe you're being overlooked? I just feel I'm untouchable. When you combine all the facets of this game, there's no one that does it like me. 
I always knew that. He's getting the blackout treatment in just his second UFC fight. One UFC fight, and this place is on its feet. This is something unusual. This kid's got some. Conor McGregor with a dominant performance here in Boston against Max Holloway. I'm a star. I'm here. Conor McGregor, ladies and gentlemen. I'm prepared for legendary status here. You know, I'm preparing myself for Hall of Fame status. Can't go anywhere without getting mobbed. You know, that, that's what I'm preparing for. But I was building up a nice bit of steam. And um, so they scheduled about in Dublin, Ireland. He has burst onto the scene with two UFC wins. He's one of the most loved active fighters in the world. He lives in a state of certainty about his potential. Randall looks hurt, this could be the end. He gets the knockout victory wow. that he was looking for. We blew the roof off the place in Dublin, Ireland, and we just kept going. That was exactly what McGregor called, and he delivered. Football stadiums are more titles, that's what I want. After three impressive wins, it was time for McGregor to face a member of the featherweight elite. Dustin's going for a darts choke. He's got it locked up. Oh, that's it! Nicely done. When it came to the ground, he was superior. A hard-hitting 25-year-old brawler from the bayou. Oh! Big There's right the counter with his head up, Joe. Dustin Poirier. Yep, he's got it. That's it. Good right hand and a left. Diego's in trouble. Oh, he's hurt. He's hurt. That's it. Excellent performance by Dustin Poirier. Dustin Poirier pulled the record for the most wins in UFC featherweight history with eight. This is a guy who a lot of people have been talking about for a while that he could be a champion at 145 pounds. Las Vegas, Nevada, playing host once again to the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Getting set for UFC 178, Poye and McGregor. Before I fought Conor the first time in 2014, the buildup was huge. It was the biggest fight I've ever been part of. This is a big opportunity for me. Everybody's talking about this fight. We're going to go out there and steal the show. You know, filming pay-per-view commercials. All right, here we go, guys. And action. Doing behind the scenes stuff. It was crazy. And even though I had a good bit of experience in the organization at that time, it still was a lot to deal with. It was a very highlight reel kind of week in the build-up for this fight, Joe. First of all, Connor and Dustin Poirier have been going back and forth with each other. <laughs> Poirier is trying to bully the bully, he says. He has a lack of experience of, of fighting real fighters like myself. I perform on a different frequency. He wants to get inside Conor McGregor's head the same way Conor McGregor tries to get inside everyone else's head. Dustin thinks it's all talk, but when he wakes up with his nose plastered on the other side of his face, he's going to know it's not all talk. I've never disliked somebody that much I've ever fought. I really wanted to beat the guy up bad. Nice. <laughs> I wanted to make the guy pay for everything he was saying. And I believe his skill level has stagnated. His chin has declined. He's a quiet little hillbilly from the back ass of nowhere. This is where it comes to an end, you know? When he walks into something sharp off me, he's gonna hit the canvas hard, and that will be that. But it wasn't just the trash talk, it was the critics, you know? It was every time I picked up my phone, people saying that I was gonna lose or that I wasn't good enough. Yesterday at the weigh-ins, it looked like we were in Ireland. I felt like everybody was against me. I don't believe all the stuff people are saying or all the stuff he's saying, none of that matters. And because of that, I might have been against myself a little bit. This may be the most highly anticipated fight for many, the notorious one, fighting in Vegas for the first time. The real question in this fight is, can Conor McGregor back up all the talk? Ready, ready. Here we go! Spinning back kick to the body. Good shot there by Poirier. Another nice leg kick by Poirier. Oh, he tagged Poirier with that left. 90 seconds in. Oh, he hurt him. It was quick. I got hit with a good shot. It is all over! Just like that! Hurt and put away. You know, I got beat. That's the real deal, ladies and gentlemen. Make no mistake about it. Conor McGregor is for real. So I said I'd knock him out in the first round, and I knocked him out in the first round. You can call me Mystic Mac because I predict these things. At that time, 
you know, Dustin was a lot more emotional in every fight. Whoever it was, he was more emotional then, he fought on emotion more. I mean, every fight, he was coming out and just trying to, like, destroy the guy in the first minute, no matter what. And it worked a lot of times, but, you know, it is a firefight, and anybody can, uh, can get clipped in those firefights. Few people know Poirier better than his longtime head coach, Mike Brown, who not only felt Poirier was an emotional fighter early on, but a depleted one as well. This is when Dustin was super crazy hardcore on his diet. Months out, he was, like, measuring every portion by the teaspoon. And I don't think that's good, man. I think that moving up really changes durability. He's gotten a lot more durable. Things don't hurt him anymore. Last go, 10 minutes. Push yourself. Last push. Poirier's limitations at featherweight were becoming abundantly clear to everyone at American Top Team. Get loose, get loose. Get loose and find a partner. But it took the guidance of a former street fighter to help Poirier see the light. Game bread is in the building. Undefeated in the streets, Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. Masvidal is a guy who I've been working with for probably around eight years. He's a pioneer. He's been around for a long time. Way before mixed martial arts was cool, Masvidal was doing it. And he's one of the first guys to tell me to move up in weight when I was still at 145 pounds. He was telling me, like, you're strong at 155. You won't be undersized. And it just didn't make sense to keep draining my body. Since then, I've been a top five fighter. Poirier's bout with McGregor would be his last at 145 pounds. And the move to lightweight has been fruitful, to say the least. Moving up to 155 pounds, here is Dustin the Diamond Poirier. There it is, Dustin Poirier! Welcome to 155, man! Oh, Poirier pouring it on, that'll do it! We have got a new lightweight contender, Dustin I've had so much success moving to lightweight because I'm enjoying it. You know, I'm not draining my body down as much to, to hit the weight. 155 pounds is just a much more comfortable weight for him where he feels better, he can focus on his training and improve more. We'll find out if it translates into the octagon. And I've had some fun performances. Boye's confidence is really high right now, too, with this run he's on. Oh, he's rocked back. Fans love watching Dustin compete because he's a dog. It just doesn't matter if he's winning or losing, he's fighting the whole time. He's always trying to hurt somebody or put him away. And at the end of the day, that's what we're paying for. We want to see entertainment, we want to be entertained, we want a vicious dog in there. That's Dustin Poirier. With eight performance bonuses and six finishes, Poirier became the most exciting lightweight in the world. Dustin the Diamond Poirier, trying to make a run in these shark-infested lightweight waters. Amassing wins over former UFC champions, Anthony Pettis. I want the Eddie Gaethje winner, and I want 50,000 bucks. Justin Gaethje. Gaethje nearly out on his feet. Poirier continues to land. Eddie Alvarez. Big knees, Alvarez is hurt. Oh, big right hand. That is it. Dustin Poirier knocks out Eddie Alvarez. And Max Holloway. was bad. Dustin's just non-stop. Seizing a gold belt of his own in the process. Dustin Poirier paid in full a lifetime's work as he becomes the UFC's interim lightweight champion. Man, the whole journey has been incredible. I'm just thankful that I'm doing what I love to do, that my family's in a good spot. Man, this is my belt. I earned this in blood. I get paid in full. This is mine. And uh, still chasing the dream. The 
2014 featherweight bout between Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor proved to be a career turning point for both men. And McGregor fondly recalls the night his legacy began to take shape. He kind of came at me a couple of times, to be honest. I think he just got a bit riled up. If he wanted to take my head off back then, well, he certainly didn't fight like a did he? These featherweights don't understand. Until they get hit by me, it's a whole lot of ball game when they get hit by me. But I've been impressed with how he handled himself after our bout. He became a UFC champion. He's had some uh, amazing performances inside the octagon. And then I went on and set my legacy in stone. There's so many factors in Conor McGregor's rise to fame, both in his ability, his personality, but all that would be nonsense if he could knock people dead with one shot, and he can. It's not all talk here. I'm gonna wipe out everyone in this division. I said that, and I will do it. Oh, big shot by McGregor. Nobody can take that left hand shot. Oh, he's hurt. Everyone breaks. Conor McGregor is a UFC interim featherweight wow. champion. Wants to go down as the greatest of all time. To be the greatest of all time, you have to do what Connor's been willing to do. Step up, fight all the best fighters, put the biggest fights on the line. Oh, oh my! He slept him! The new undisputed featherweight champion of the world, Connor McGregor. All the baby, we did it! Yeah! Connor is too big for 145, and I think at 155 he will perform better. No fighter in UFC history has ever been champion in two weight divisions at the same time. Lofty dreams take an insane amount of work. If you can see it in your mind's eye and have the courage to put yourself out there. Oh, he's done. He's done. That's it. We want to achieve. The first man ever to hold two titles simultaneously. And I hit it, you know, so. Um, I'm very proud of my achievements. Oh, that looks good! Oh. And many more to come. Today we're shooting for Dystopia. It's a, a mobile video game we've created. Yeah, I can't change the culture. I see the hate, so say what you say, because I gotta watch for the vultures. McGregor would become the first simultaneous belt holder in UFC history. So the camera's coming in from behind me, yeah. Which yeah. brought unparalleled crossover fame. Can you fight? And a portfolio of business endeavors. Please welcome Conor How many businesses do I own? I own the fight business. Every single dot of this, I am in on everything. The food, beverage, the gate, the pay-per-view. And I will collect the whole lot. I own the whiskey business. I own the fashion business, the fitness business. I put in a lot of work on things I am passionate about, and it's paying off. It's been a, an amazing journey. I'm very proud to show my son. We have some great things in the pipeline, some exciting things for our fans from the whiskey aspect from the fitness aspect and, of course, from the fight aspect. The limelight would eventually distract McGregor from defending his UFC titles. The lightweight title has pretty much been in limbo since UFC 205 when Conor won the belt in a knockout win over Eddie Alvarez. McGregor immediately shifted his focus to boxing after that, though, to fight Floyd Mayweather. Ah! You owe your whole group, you owe your whole group. So the titles were vacated amidst an ongoing hiatus. Conor McGregor, who left to go pursue boxing as the lightweight champion, relinquished the title. Khabib Nurmagomedov assumed the throne in his absence making McGregor's return the most highly anticipated event in MMA history. The notorious Conor McGregor makes his grand return to mixed martial arts, and what a challenge he has in front of him here tonight. Conor's return fighter when he fought Khabib was a huge pay-per-view. This is a massive, massive event, not just for mixed martial arts, this is a massive cultural event. This is a massive international event. 
But in this return, he draws the most dominant force in the game. That is one cup eaten Romago met up. Of course, I was watching. I thought Connor showed good takedown defense in the open. He got out wrestled against the fence. Absolutely incredible the way he dominates people in the grappling. Never seen anything like it. There's the tap! Still undisputed! Khabib Nurmagomedov has finished Conor McGregor tonight! Which I know exactly how he feels because Khabib uh, did the same to me. Here is the UFC's interim lightweight champ, Dustin Poirier. He will finally fight for the undisputed UFC lightweight championship. The speed on that double leg is just incredible. And this is where he does his best work. It makes things miserable for you. It hangs on your hands, beats you up, cranks your neck. He's a different, different kind of fella against the fence, man. His wrestling and grappling is some of the best. You know, the, it is the best. Nurmagomedov under the chin, there's the top! Puppy Nurmagomedov, 28-0! After suffering defeat to Nurmagomedov, a subsequent hip surgery would add insult to injury for Poirier, sidelining him for the longest duration of his entire career. But the series of devastating events were nothing new for the Diamond. I've been knocked down, but I've always gotten back up. That's the fight game, you just gotta Live, learn, keep competing, take losses, take lessons, and try to get better. I've never lost two fights in a row in my career. You know, and I have 40 fights, 40 something fights. I keep pushing, keep learning, keep evolving. I keep the belief. And I get back up. I know I'm, I'm one of the best in the world. And I'm fighting the best guys in the world. After nine months on the shelf, Aurier was dealt New Zealand's most prolific rising knockout artist. This man here, I mean, he is on a roll right now. He's the elite of this division. Dan Hooker, a fitting challenge for the perennial contender with unwavering resolve. It was my return fight. I just had surgery, a very intense, very serious surgery that put me on the sidelines for a while. Ready, let's fight. Great start to a great fight. And that's the first time in 13 years of fighting that I had to sit on the sidelines. Aurier's hands looking fast early tonight. Oh! Wow! Man! This is incredible! He has thrown a lot of potential fight enders that Hooker has eaten. Sitting, learning. I couldn't physically train, but I could mentally train and plan the comeback. That's what I did. One of the best rounds of 2020, unless you like defense. Recent memory, the best fight I've ever seen in my life. Because this is amazing. We having fun? Having a blast, yeah. All right, you're looking good. We stay focused, we get this guy out of here. OK. All right? Yeah, I'm having a blast. The best line ever. This is what high-level mixed martial arts is all about. Losing to Khabib, trying to unify the belts, having surgery and then bouncing back over a top five opponent with a potential fight of the year fight. I'm proud of it. Poirier finishing this fight very, very strong. I mean, these guys stand up in applause on that one. Oh my gosh. This just shows who I am. I missed a bounce back. Poirier looked like a champion tonight. For all the turmoil now synonymous with 2020, this is a huge fight. Some might remember that the year began with great promise. This is the chance for him. In the UFC's first pay-per-view event, former double champ Conor McGregor returned from a 15-month hiatus to face Donald Cerrone, the winningest fighter in UFC history. For a welterweight headliner in 
Las Vegas. We started 2020 with an absolute corker of an event. Record-breaking numbers. I got goosebumps, so I'm very, very excited right now. I got goosebumps, too. I cannot wait for this fight. This is how charismatic and enigmatic this guy is. Right now, people are freaking out all over the world because this guy's fighting. The tension in this building is undescribable. If you're not here, I'd imagine around the world as you're watching, it feels pretty tense. Oh, Donald's nose is already bleeding. Get out of here with that. Oh! Early head kick from McGregor! Cerrone covering up! Cerrone's down! Oh, this is gonna Herb be Dean's it! Dean's gonna stop it. That's it. Conor wow. McGregor! Less than a minute in, announces his return. The king is back. I knew I was gonna create magic in there against Donald. Correct preparation. McGregor committed. That's it. It's, it's a wrap. And so the story goes. A pandemic brought the world to its knees. Eliminating McGregor's hopes for a multi-fight calendar year. But nearly 12 months later, McGregor is primed for a return. And now prepares with a select crew at an isolated enclave in Southern Europe. I just want to move around, get the feel of it. Warm up your yeah. pads a bit. Yeah. Just sharp. Sharp, yeah. I'm walking off the shots. Big fist, please. But there's a good array of masters at their crafts, you know. I've got John at the head, overseeing all the mixed martial arts elements of it. Roddy on the pads. I've got Phil Sutliff out of Crumlin Boxing Club. He's got a couple of guys here with him. We've mixed it up a little bit, kept it fresh. So it's been a good run of training, so I'm very happy with it. Connor has it down to a fine art now. He has a team around him that are so good, right? But remember, Connor put that team around him. He picks his own shots, he picks his own sessions to make sure that he's ready. Connor's on fire at the moment, right? He's on fire. I had a masterful performance against Donald Cerrone at the start of 2020. And I remember thinking at that time I would take out anyone across 155 or 170. But I have surpassed that level again. Myself and my team, we have put in a tremendous amount of work here. Everything is measured and, you know, the results are shown. For Dustin Poirier, growth and adaptation have defined his career. Since the early days of throwing hands in the Deep South, we welcome you here to Cajun Country. It's the USA MMA Championship on the line. Opposite arm, opposite leg. We're here and just boom, there. Just give me full rotation and close the angle down. In Mississippi and Louisiana and Texas areas, we didn't have those kind of rules that they have now. Okay, who wants to throw elbows? Yeah. In the amateur it fight. It really was that. Yeah. That's, uh, okay, we got eight yeah. to four. Eight, the elbows win, so y'all can throw elbows now. Put your chin on and you go to work on this part. This part does not want to be in the ring with you. <laughs> fights are going kind of quick. We need some time. These last fights are going to be five minutes or four minutes. What's up, my baby? They just do whatever. The 
Poirier of today is a far cry from the Louisiana brawler he once was. But he's also vastly improved from his first bout with Conor McGregor, which Poirier plans to show in the rematch. You know, fighting is about evolving over the years. It's about getting better, adapting. The sport's always evolving. You have to keep up with the sport. Conor McGregor, he says, I own this game. Tonight will be just more validation. The real question in this fight, can Conor McGregor back up all the talk? I've been in the UFC for 10 years now, but uh, I still feel like I'm one of the guys grinding every day, still learning on the job. Oh, he heard him. Looking to finish the fight. It's over. Well, you got just up to him. That's it. But Dustin Poirier, he has faced highs and lows. He has emerged from losses a better fighter. When you're talking about true growth and progression, I think he's made leaps and bounds from that first fight with Connor. So it's going to be a totally different fight. Two, one, let's go. Come on. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. This man is coming back. He's here to prove that he's still the top. Who's going to argue the finishes that he has against Pettis, Holloway, Gaethje? He's got all the talent in the world and just continues to improve. It's a fight. I feel good. I feel like I matured a lot. I've learned a lot of lessons, took a lot of lumps, made mistakes, picked myself back up. And I continue to do that. And he will be a much better fighter because of the adjustments that he's made. And I feel like I'm in the best position, mentally, physically, that I can be to compete for 25 minutes on January 23rd. And that's what it's going to be. Me at my best. Whatever that is, we're going to find out. As former WFC champ Conor McGregor, prepares for his rematch with Dustin Poirier on January 23rd. Not even the beautiful cliffs of Lagos can provide adequate distraction from the unprecedented times we all currently face. There's not a lot going on at the minute. I think everyone on planet Earth has been almost forced to kind of go within themselves. You know, I've hit the jackpot. I've achieved everything I ever set out to achieve. But, you know, it's about recalibrating and, you know, resetting your goals, you know, and that's, that's kind of where I'm at. I've got a lot more things I want to achieve in this world. You know, the fire is certainly lit under my belly and everyone knows that that's here. Joining McGregor for UFC 257 training camp are staples of his fast conditioning program. Colin Byrne. Dr. Julian Dalby. I first came into the MMA world as a ringside doctor. So between that and my physiology background, I was asked to come into the camp after Connor had suffered a shock loss to Nate Diaz. Now Connor is it less than 100%. Basically, that was down to fitness. He'd gone up in weight. Um, the extra fat probably didn't help his VO2 max. Connor looks for the takedown. Connor's in serious trouble. We were brought in, myself and Colin, to, to get his conditioning up to scratch for the Diaz 2, which, uh, as most people know, was a, a great success. Connor re energized here. He seems to have caught a second win, Mike. Moving well. Good combination. Just went strength to strength after that. The There's no skill like the old skill. Oh, I'm monitoring the B, monitoring the output, as well as the time it takes to rest and all that. But it's just gritty, hard work and grinding. It's given us a good guideline into where he's now, to all the work we've done over the years compared to five years ago when we got in here for us, and it's, uh, it's, it's quite a massive difference. You know, it's been many ups and downs, but I've only actually shed blood inside the octagon once. I am fresh as a here. And we're very eager to get in and display our work.
McGregor's return comes in a lightweight pay-per-view headliner on January 23rd. Spinning back kick to the body. Against a familiar foe. Another nice leg kick by Poirier. But familiarity bears less significance. He said he would make it look easy. He made it look easy. When a rematch is six years removed from the first contest. Well, a lot more grown, a lot more experienced. Dustin has a kid. What's up, baby girl? And, you know, I've got a blade in the army of kids now at the minute. Come on, do your boxing. Let's see. Keep your hands up. So that certainly changes it for sure. You know, you, you beat a man or things happen in, in, in your careers. And Bubble, up and down, left, right, forward, like that score. There's always questions then as time goes on, what about now and what will happen if this happened? So we're going to do it again and I'm very excited. Right? McGregor proved to be the superior striker when he faced Poirier. The boxing coach, Daya Davis, has honed Poirier's natural ability to throw hands since the diamond was a developing featherweight prospect. The first fight where I worked with Dustin was him and Jonathan Brookins. And during that fight, I mean, he was doing some stuff like, you know, very Tyson-esque. Good right hook there by Poirier. And that's something that we've never really worked on, but we were only in camp for that fight for maybe four or five weeks. And so far, I'm seeing some significant improvement in his striking, especially his timing. Oh! oh! But since then, obviously, he's grown tremendously. Like, he's known for his boxing. Double slip my jab. Whenever I get to my first week here in Florida, I usually meet up with Daya Davis. One, two. Watch footage of my opponent, look for tendencies. Double. Look for things that we agree on. Good work, good work. Good, one jab. And then we plan my training camp around that. No matter how comfortable Poirier has become with the sweet science. Stay ready, stay engaged. Jab. McGregor remains an extraordinary challenge on the feet. Connor's a very good striker. I mean, he's probably one of the best counter punches in the game. Man, accuracy of that left hand. You're just gonna throw one jab, he's gonna pull and counter. He does that better than anybody in the game. Oh man, oh he's done, he's done. One, two, three, roll under. But if you apply pressure to him, we know what happens with Connor, he folds. And Connor looks for the takedown. And when you apply pressure to Dustin. Unbelievable resolve. That's why he's nicknamed the Diamond. Unbelievable toughness. Diamonds are formed under pressure. Unbelievable grit. And that's what we're looking to apply. You won't stop my we're looking for revenge, you know? Oh, he tagged him on the left. He wants to show the world that he's a better fighter than when they first met in 2014. Dustin Poirier. The striking of Poirier has just gotten so much better. And Conor McGregor. He can find your chin from anywhere. Are not the rising contenders they were in 2014. Conor McGregor is as special. He slapped him! As he says he is. They are top five lightweights and former UFC champions. This man is an absolute animal. But each enter this rematch with the same goal. Decisive victory. What do you want to do this time? Come forward and go for it? Or you're going to back away and try and wait for it? Either option is bad. Knock him out in the first round and get out of there. That's the way I want to see this fight in. Oh! Gaethje nearly out on his feet. Poirier continues to land. Early head kick from McGregor. I'll knock Dustin out inside 60 seconds. I'm going to beat the time that I beat him in for four, and I'm going to beat the shot I beat him in also. It just seems to be one of those punches and fighters just get shocked by. January 23rd, I'm going to get my hand raised by any means necessary. Ooh! <laughs> Ooh! These are the ones, J.A. I'm telling you. These ya. are the ones.